Okay, Jonathan, tour is all but done and Team GC is sewn up, so how happy are you? Yeah, very. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's incredible. You know, we set out <coughs> the tour with five objectives and it's rare that you accomplish all five. And actually, quite frankly, I thought that I might have been spreading the team too thin by trying to accomplish all five because it was very much a, a balancing act you know, between all the different personalities in the team, but the five objectives were um, to win stages, you know, with Tyler and Tor. Yeah, I mean, you know, and maybe someone else gets up in it, but we, we were always going to play an aggressive open strategy, get guys in breakaways, and that was a bit, you know, Tor didn't at first know what to make of that, that I was telling him that, you know, he was going to try for breakaways, and uh, but in the end that turned out great, didn't it? Um, the second objective was to win the team time trial, did that. Third objective was to hold the yellow jersey, did that. Fourth objective was to get a guy in the top 10, did that. And then the last objective, which I didn't start talking about until a couple days ago because I didn't, you know, I, I, I wanted to say something, but I, you know, I said, no, no, you know, this, this one's tricky because you, you know, it's to win the Team GC because you have to have, you know, three strong guys every day. And that's not always so easy to accomplish. So, uh, so all five team objectives are, were accomplished, which is, uh, I don't think I can ever say that in, my time as a director that we you know 100% have accomplished every objective and, and uh, I, I think it's extremely rare in cycling so I'm I'm uh, you know I'm, I'm blown away by how hard the guys have worked to you know, I mean we've been in the breakaways we've ridden on the front we've had you know guys you know in the front group climbing I mean it we're you know we're the best team in the Tour de France but we're also the most tired team in the Tour de France for sure yeah What's made the difference? I mean, you do have a couple, a few new guys from Cervelo, but from last year's Cervelo test team, but yet the core of the Tour de France team is is the the Garmin contingent from before us. So, what's the difference this year? Well, I mean, listen, uh, I think every year we select the best team for the race, you know, and and uh, you know if you look at. You know, the core of the Perry roubaix team was, you know, Cervelo test team. And, of course, it was a winner from, you know, our old team. But, you know, it's, it's I mean, I, I think it's just, you know, getting everyone to, to buy into, you know, a, a team where there aren't little, you know, cliques and factions and there are not individual objectives. There are, this is what the team is going to do. This is the team's objective. Now, you may be the guy we're working for today and you may be the one who wins, but it's the team's objective and, and everyone's going to celebrate that. And, and I think that that mentality um, has been much stronger this year than ever before and, uh, and, it, and it's really, really paid off in spades. Is that exemplified by Tom Danielson being the highest placed rider? I mean, rider Hesjedal and Christian van der Velde have both finished fourth in the past and I'm sure they probably fancy their chances of pushing for a high placing. Tom was a late sign up to the team, so is that a reflection of the team spirit that they all went in behind Tom when, when maybe their own positions were compromised by crashes? No, I mean, listen, those guys, uh, you know, they were always up for helping out the best guy. I mean, there, there was never any question that uh, we were going to, you know, we were going to work for whoever the best guy was. And, you know, Tom was coming into the tour, you know, he's third in California, ninth in Tour de Suisse, and probably would have been a little better in Tour de Suisse and some bad luck there so you could see he was he was just more on the boil and, and, and I think the key a lot of times especially you know when you when you're dealing in a modern age of clean cycling is that you catch riders when they're coming on to form and you catch them while they're on boil like it's to sort of pre-program you know perfect form like I'm gonna be on form these three weeks it's very difficult to do I mean the human body it's not robotic so you know of course all three of those guys wanted to be hundred percent their best at the Tour de France you know, but only one of them was 100% of their absolute best, and that's okay. Like to me, that that's you know that that's you got to be flexible. You got to adapt to what you know what the human body does, and and uh, I think all three of them accept that. And, and quite frankly, you know, Christian and Ryder are you know they're, they're damn happy about how the whole team's gone. Thomas uh, Ryder, who perhaps unfortunately got got uh, labelled with the next Armstrong tag when he was younger, and I think has probably struggled with the pressure of that. Uh, and he's he's a guy that in recent years has maybe been a little stressed until I think the birth of his child that helped him kind of rebalance everything. So, how big is this for him? You think for the rest of his career that he's come to the tour for the first time, he's finished in the top ten. Well, you know, I don't, I don't want to make the mistake of now loading pressure on him again. But you know, end of the day, Tom's just a, he's a rider that's taken him a while to mature physically and and uh, you know and psychologically you know it, people forget that he didn't really start racing bikes you know until he was in his 20s and so um, 
you know, it's just the little details of, of, of cycling, of you know how to handle the peloton, how to, you know, just just small things that that he was never taught as a junior or U23 because he didn't do that. He was just he went from racing mountain bikes and you know riding around Colorado to boom, you know, winning Tour Langkawi, and and so he skipped a lot of the just real basic stuff. And you know what we've done with Tom and is just to back up a little bit and say, whoa, whoa you know, let, let's forget about this next Armstrong thing. Let, let's you know. Let's learn how to like shift your front derailleur so your chain doesn't come off. You know, I mean, I, and, 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 and it's a little basic thing, just working with him on just the really simple things that have made the difference for him, that have actually gotten him to, you know, understand how the telethons. I mean, he stayed in front of almost all the crashes in the tour this year, and uh, he, he's. You know, though, sticking to the basics with him and just keeping it, you know, focused is is all he needs. I mean, and and, uh, and I'm sure, you know, that now that he's done this, you know, is there progression for him to go? Yeah, I'm sure there is. I mean, uh, we're definitely going to try to do that. But I would, it'd be a mistake to, to, to just go ahead and load him back with, the, okay, now next year you can be on the podium because that, that's a mistake to say that. You know? is, is the key with Tom to keep the pressure off him and, and to, you know, have the right balance of of stimulation and, and intention? Yeah, I mean, I, the, the, the key with Tom is, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just to keep him happy and focus on the race. If, you know, all the external stuff, if he could just keep that behind him, then he, you know, he's a very talented athlete, as everyone can see. Last question, Champs-Élysées tomorrow, will the team try and take the stage there? Oh yeah, hell yeah.